Hey folks, I'm back with my SmackDown recap now. Um, I don't know when this is going to go up because my internet access seems to be up and down right now. Uh, as I'm recording this, I don't have any internet access. Uh, so let me just get right into it. All of, overall, I thought this SmackDown this week was a very, was a, it was a mediocre show. There were some good matches on it. Um, but yeah, the booking, of course, was ridiculous. Uh, we have a new, we have a new number one contender for the world title. So meet the new content, meet the new challenger, same as the old challenger. Um, that was Orton and Del Rio. Um, so we had that, and we had uh, a really stupid Santino Morale and Tony Cesaro bit. We had a tag team, a five tag team brawl in the back. Uh, and uh, we had Sheamus versus Dolph Ziggler, which made no sense since Dolph's the, mo the money in the bank holder, and he's challenging the he's facing the world champion in a non-title match. Uh, and we had no Josh Matthews since he was selling the can attack from SummerSlam, so everyone, so Michael Cole was doing commentary with guest commentators for pretty much every match. So the show picked up with Randy Orton coming to the ring. He said that he thrives on confrontation, and he mentions that, you know, like Del Rio said that, you know, Orton should mind his own business, and that's, and that Orton's win uh, over Del Rio on Raw was tainted, and Orton says, too bad. Uh, then uh, he said, Orton says that he wants a world title match, and he challenges anyone who's got a problem with that to come out to the ring right now. So out comes the world champion Sheamus. Uh, Sheamus says that he, like, the wheel's gotten chance after chance at the world title, and he's blown it, and he's blown on it every time. So, and then Sheamus says that, you know, both, um, that both he and Orton beat the wheel fair and square, you know, which they didn't do, you know, the foot on the rub and all that stuff, and in interference. Uh, Sheamus says that he wants Orton to be the next guy to have a title match. Uh, you know, and and then you know, he he wants to defend the belt against Orton next, and then Booker T comes out, and he asks the fans if they want to see the match. Of course, they cheer for it. Uh, and then B Booker tells Orton uh, they're going to talk about what happened on Monday night. But before anything else happens, I come up with Dario and Ricardo Rodriguez. Uh, Del Rio still complains about what happened at SummerSlam and on Raw. He uh, he mentions that he wants a rematch with Sheamus for the title, and he calls Sheamus a cheater. And Randy Orton is a crazy animal. Uh, then uh, Del Rio you know, says that he should have been world champion by now, uh, but because you know, because you know, everyone knows that Sheamus cheated, and he says that uh, he t he then he tells Orton that the only reason he beat Del Rio, you know, he won on Monday is because Sheamus cheated again. So then Del Rio says that he fi filed some kind of protest and is waiting for an answer or whatever, I don't know. So Del Rio says that this is all a conspiracy against him, you know, Booker Orton and uh, Sheamus and I, don't even, I think he might even said the fans too, are all conspiring against him. Uh, and Del Rio asks Booker, or Del Rio tells Booker that he's just like Sheamus, he's a, he's a criminal and a cheater. And, and um, then Booker turns to Orton and says that, you know, Orton will always be in line for a title shot, but the next guy in line was Del Rio. Until he came out and ran his mouth. So then Booker says that later on in the show, we get Randy Orton versus Alberto Del Rio. Winner challenges Sheamus at Night of Champions for I'm guessing at Night of Champions for the World Title. A decent opening uh, segment, but yeah, it, it's the same. It was the same as how they set up the SummerSlam WWE title match. I was like, okay, we got two guys here. We're gonna have the winner for, challenge for the challenge for the belt at the next pay per view. I mean, they're doing the same stuff in just a month. You know, I mean. I thought they were all, they all had decent promos, decent side promos on the mic, but it's like kind of, it was the same exact setup. Um, so then we have Michael Cole, you know, like I mentioned, he was doing commentary by himself, and mentioned Josh Matthews being attacked by Kane from SummerSlam, they re-showed that, when Josh Matthews went up to Kane, and he was like, I've been asked, and then got, the Kane just threw him. Uh, so then Teddy Long was on commentary, and he tells uh, Michael Cole that they'll be guest commentator for every match on the show this week. So the ride back comes out and says that tonight Jinder Mahal will finally realize his place on the food chain and then the fans chant feed me more. And then we get Ryback versus Jinder. Uh, Ryback just pretty much squashes him. This was short. Um, it looks, I don't know, I mean, since Ryback, who's the babyface, got the clean pin, got the clean win on the heel, it uh, looks like it might be the end of this short and pointless feud. So I don't know, I don't know what's next for these two guys. Um, so we get Caitlyn coming out to do commentary for the next match. Divas champ Layla versus Alicia Fox. Decent but short match. It was actually better than I expected. Layla got the win. 
Um, so then afterwards, Caitlyn gets in the ring, and she and Layla, you know, look at you, you know, have a stare, a bit of a stare at them, and they shake hands and they hug each other. And then out comes Eve, and she raises both their hands, and they both, both Caitlyn and Layla have confused looks on their face. I was okay with this segment. Um, and then they recap the end of Raw with Cena and Punk, and then Punk taking the roller in the back of the head. Um, then we go to the backstage segment with uh, Dolph Ziggler and Vicky Guerrero. Dolph says that if, uh, if anyone uh, wants to talk about, you know, wants to talk about who the best in the world is, they're talking about him. And Vicky says that Dolph was the guy that you know, sent Jericho packing, even though Jericho laid him out right after Dolph beat him. Um, <laughs> You know, Dolph says that when it comes right down to it, Jericho can't win the big one, even though he did beat Dolph Ziggler at SummerSlam. Um, and Dolph asks, uh, what was up with uh, AJ making him, making Dolph defend the Money in the Bank uh, briefcase against Jericho on Raw. And Vicky says that she'll take care of AJ, and Dolph just needs to concentrate on becoming the future world champion. Then in comes Sheamus, and he says there's no time like the present. Sheamus say, uh, says to Ziggler that if he's as good as he says he is, he should cash in the Money in the Bank case tonight. Dolph says that ain't gonna happen. And Dolph says that um, when he does cash it in, it'll be on his terms. And he says that if, if uh, Sheamus happens to be um, world champion when he does cash it in, Sheamus won't see it coming. And then Taylor Long comes by and tells Sheamus and Dolph says that uh, he'll advise Booker to make them face each other later on. Um, so, uh, and, and then Teddy Long says that if Dolph is as good as he says he is, maybe he'll cash in, but then again, maybe not. Uh, so, so then, you know, uh, Dolph sa says, uh, oh, sounds great, you know, uh, sounds great to us, to him and Vicky, and they walk off, and Vicky was like, she didn't really look too thrilled about it. Uh, segment was alright, but I, I, like I, said, I still didn't get why they're having the Money in the Bank briefcase holder face the world champion in a freaking non-title match. What the hell is this? So then, um, next match, which wasn't in the spoilers, I don't know why, Cody Rhodes is on commentary, and he's got a drawing of Sin Cara unmasked, and he's doing that whole crap again. So then we get Sin Cara versus Heath Slater. Uh, Heath Slater actually won this one. Uh, referee was distracted with him at some, with Slater at some point. And then Cody Rhodes uh, came in and turned Sin Cara's mask around backwards. Then Heath Slater hits things, uh, Scorpion Death Drop, and got the three count. Ah, it, was, it was a decent match. And then afterwards, Cody Rhodes got in the ring, and he kicks Sin Cara around for a bit. And once again, we go to unmask him, but the referees come in and stop him. Uh, no, it, it was all right. You know, I said the whole thing with Cody Rhodes trying to unmask Sin Cara is just, it's, it, you know, it's, it's like, oh, because he's, because he's hideous, because he's got a hideous monster's face or whatever. I mean, it's the same thing that Jericho said about a hooping dude in, uh, in, you know, at Super Bowl 98, when hooping dude actually lost an unmask. He's like, oh, yeah, I've seen him wear his mask, man, he's looking, looking, uh, it's, it's the same thing. Um, so then we get Vicky on commentary for the Seamus Dolph match, look at that. Uh, Seamus actually wins by DQ, because Dolph got the money in the bank case and just hit Seamus with that. Uh, that was here, Seamus was going for the road kick, and Dolph saw it coming, so he dropped to the mat, and Vicky handed him the money in the bank briefcase, and he hit Seamus with it, and then it was a DQ, and then afterwards, D Dolph him, hit him with the hit Seamus with the briefcase again. And then Dolph hinted at her and he hinted that he was going to cash the case in, but the referee was taking too long, and then Seamus recovered, and so Dolph Ziggler headed for the hills. Uh, like I said, I thought the match was good, and I, I was okay with I was okay with uh, what happened, you know, what, what they did here. Um, then they had to wait that bad video package, hyping up his return. And like I said, these have really been really been good, good, uh, good ways to hype up his return. I'm really hoping that they make him more of a credible heel when he returns, you know, not making the head for the hills heel like they do with anybody else. Um, so then we get my, my um, the, the worst segment of the night, that's I mean, my book, um, Santino comes out to the ring, he says that he was U.S. champion for 166 freaking days, uh, he says that he's, and he says that now that he lost the title, he's finding himself becoming less American, and he doesn't, and he doesn't like that. So he says that he, he couldn't remember how apple pie tastes, so he had one, but that isn't the point. The point is that he feels that he let everyone down since he lost the U.S. title to Antonio Claudio Castanoli Cesaro. Uh, then he says that, you know, uh, everyone was good and their fans have been asking him if he and his puppet Cobra are still on the same page. I can't believe I, can't believe I just said that. I can't, couldn't believe I wrote it either. Um, and he says, who's fair right now? So he pulls up the sock puppet Cobra. And he talks to it, 
And he says, because the Cobra got distracted by Oksana, it cost them the U.S. title. Uh. So then Santino uh, tells his puppet Cobra that he's not pissed off at him, he's not mad at him. He says, it's not about how often you fall, but how often you get back up. And he says, I'm not the corner famous Titanic American. Robert De, you know, Robert De Niro, and he says some kind of, some line from some other actor, I don't even know what he said, who cares. And then he says he wants to quote the, the other famous Italian-American, Italian Rocky Balboa, and he does the whole different, you know, the, if I could change, you could change, everyone could change, get from the end of Rocky IV. And he said, and he said, and then he has the puppet going, you know, going like this, is like, the Cobra's all fired up inside, he's like, oh, that's the Cobra I love! And, and then, you know, it, and I wasn't loving this promo. So then he tells the Cobra that he that he believes that um, he you know, he believes in uh, his puppet Cobra, and that together they can once again become U.S. champion. I mean, who the hell writes this? Uh, so then out come new U.S. champion Antonio Cesaro and Oksana. Uh, Cesaro does the usual uh, saying a word in five languages, but the word of the week was winner. Uh, it's old. Uh, so Cesaro says that he's a winner, and then Santino heads up the stage and goes after him, and he tags him bit. And, and then Oksana distracts the Cobra, and I, I tell you, I can't make this bull crap up. Uh, so then uh, Oksana dis distracts the, the puppet Cobra, and then Cesaro lays Santino out. You know, this is just so stupid. You know, it's just like, why the hell are they acting like the Cobra? Sock puppet is real. When Santino himself has even said on the show, like, oh, it's just a puppet, there's nothing to do with Cobra. And then they act like it's real, because then he's like, like, sign or whatever. I mean, ha having Santino act, uh, act like Cobra is real is just as stupid as our truth talking to the invisible little Jimmy and having the announcers act like, or having Jerry Lawler act like he's real. It's just as stupid. Um, so then we, um, we get Ricardo getting yelled at by Del Rio backstage again. Um, they didn't really show, they didn't really, um, have the mic or anything, they just showed Del Rio chew, chewing them out again. Uh, so then we get the primetime players on commentary for the next match, tag champs, our truth of Kofi Kingston, and Invisible Little Jimmy. Versus Epic Old Primo, uh, Truth Pin Primo for the, for Kofi, so, for Kofi and Truth to win. Uh, it was actually a decent match, um, you know, it, it turned into, you know, like, like most tag matches do, you know, it turned, you know, it broke down all four guys, um, Went at it, uh, and then Primo uh, went for backstabber on uh, on Truth. The Truth held onto the ropes, and then Truth hit his finisher and got the three count. A decent match there. Um, then uh, they show a video package of the SmackDown World Tour. They were in you know, like Taiwan and um, Shanghai, China, and I think they might have gone to Japan too. Oh, that was actually pretty cool. Um, so then backstage, Match Striker interviews our Truth and Kofi Kingston. He asks them now that they beat the Prime Ten players and Primo and Epico, who this is their next challengers. Uh, Kofi says that's not up to them, but he and Truth are willing to take on all comers. And Truth says the little Jimmy says there's a lot of time in the locker room who deserve a shot at the tag titles. Little Jimmy. Can you take Truth, uh, so then Truth says that uh, they don't worry about the competition. Competition worries about them. And then in come the primetime players, and they rag on little Jimmy. And whatever, and then Titus on the other side. Tells us our truth that Little Jimmy isn't real, just like Kofi and Truth aren't the real tag team champions. And he says that they'll get the title. You know, Titus says that he and Don will become tag team champions, and you know what's going to happen after that? <laughs> and then, you know, so that. And then, in come the Usos. They say they deserve a tag title match. And then, come in Epico and Primo, and they said they beat the prime time players and one of the other two teams. I don't even could tell who they were pointing to. And they said that they should get the next shot at the titles. Then, in come. Justin Gabriel and Tyson Kidd, and then all five teams brawl. Well, this was good. I, I, I thought this was decent. You know, it's like I said. You know, it's like I haven't seen really uh, the titles have this um, have any meaning meant you know, put on them for a, for a while. And this is probably the only the only time that they'll focus on the brawl. Oh. But the brawl, the brawl, I thought was good. Um, so then Booker's in his office on his phone, telling telling someone that he's got a he's got. Some situation taken care of. Then it comes Teddy Long and he says that he tells Booker that the referees broke up the brawl with the tag teams. And then he discusses about you know what to do with the tag title situation. They're trying to decide who should get in, who should be the next challengers. Then in comes Eve and she says she came up with a win loss record. A short list of a win loss record for each team. 
and she's also organized Booker T's schedule for like the next couple of weeks or whatever. So then Booker's really impressed with Eve. He puts her over for that, and he walks out. And he's like, hey, hey, hey. And then, um, then Eve says, oh, hey, Teddy, I didn't know you were standing there. You know, she's like, yeah, probably whatever. And then Long had like the mm-hmm. really pissed off look on his face. Not a bad segment. Um, then they recap the Daniel Bryan Kane storyline, the video package, and then we show the pro- the pulling the Brock Lesnar promo from Monday, and also show some still shots of Lesnar breaking Triple H's arm at SummerSlam. Um, and then they uh, replay some, the uh, Shawn Michaels promo from from Monday night also. Uh, so then we get Sheamus on commentary for the main event. Randy Orton versus Alberto Del Rio in a number one contender world title match. Del Rio won. Uh, he won by submission. Um, and it's like I said, you know, I was glad that they didn't have the match go to a no finish like they did with Punk and, uh, Cena and the Big Show. But, um, you know, and do that bit. But, uh, you know, so uh, the end came when uh, Orton was going for the RKO. Del Rio held onto the ropes. And then he got Orton in the cross arm breaker. And Orton tapped out. So then Ricardo got in the ring to celebrate with Del Rio. Del Rio showed Ricardo down in the mat, and then Del Rio takes, uh, he snatches Ricardo's shoe off, and throws it at Sheamus, and then Sheamus gets in the ring, and he, Del Rio, go at it for a bit, they brawl, and then Ricardo jumps on Sheamus, Ricardo throws him off, Del Rio gi- uh, gives Sheamus roundhouse kick, and I think in the back of the head, um, then Ricardo gave his other shoe to Del Rio, and Del Rio hit Sheamus, and not with, with Ricardo's shoe, knocked him cold. And then, as Del Rio and Ricardo headed up the ramp, um, out comes Dolph Ziggler, and once again, hitting like he's going to cash in the money in the bank case. But before that could happen, Randy Orton flattens him with an RKO. Uh, so then, I think uh, Del Rio and uh, yeah, Del Rio and Ricardo are on the stage, and he and Sheamus is in the ring, and the two of them have a stare down. And you know, Orton looked down too, and that was the end. Of, and and that was the end of the show. Uh, like I said, once again, they made Dolph look like a complete chump here. Uh, like I said, there, there aren't really too many heels, if, if any, that, that have any credibility to them in WWE these days. It's just like, you know, all the baby faces have got to be these wisecracking joke machines, and the heels have got to be these pussies. It's, uh, it, it, you know, it's, so, you know it, it's just so stupid. You know, it's like I say, you know, I, I actually thought the, the, the uh, orton Rio match was good, and even the post-match stuff was good, right up until they had Orton RKO Duff. Uh... So, that, like I say, you know, I, this week's show had its ups and downs for sure. You know, like I say, um, Del Rio really won't beat Orton, so it's going to be him and Sheamus for the title. But I'm sure they're going to put Randy Orton in there too, so they're going to redo what they did at SummerSlam anyway. Probably you know, a triple threat match for the other world title. Way to go, way to go, uncreative. Uh, but like I say, up, it had its ups and downs this week. Um, opening segment uh, that set up the match. Uh, was this, like I said, the same as how they set up uh, Cena Big Show for SummerSlam. Uh, like I said, the match, you know, match was good, but I, you know, uh, like I said, I got the feeling that they're going to throw Randy Orton in the mix and it's going to become a triple threat anyway. They made Dolph look like a look like a drone again. Uh, I don't know, I don't know why the hell Vincent Creative feel the need to always bury this guy. Um, leaves the Booker Taylor Long leave segment backstage was was all right. You know, um, hopefully, I hope they don't turn long. Teddy Long heel since Booker was impressed with Eve's abilities to to keep everything uh, organized or whatever. Uh, Ryback and Jinder Mahal was kind of a short, meaningless match, and like I said, since Ryback got the clean pin on him, I'm guessing that might be the end of the feud. So what the hell is next for these guys? Uh, tag ma- the tag match was solid, and the backstage brawl with the five tag teams, and who knew there were that many in WWE? Uh, I I thought that was a good bit. Uh, letting Alicia Fox was okay too. It was actually better than I expected to be. Um, and of course, Santino talking to his Cobra and the whole bit with it, and him getting, uh, not feeling like an American and getting flattened by Cesaro, which is lame. Cesaro's saying the same word in five languages every freaking week is old. Um, you know, like I said. And even, you know, it's like I wasn't, also, like I said, I, I wasn't into, you know, I, I didn't get why they had Dolph face, you know, Sheamus in a non-title match. But, but I thought the, the, the match itself, uh, it was good. You know, the in-ring action. So, uh, overall, like I said, I thought, I thought it was a hit and miss and mediocre show. It definitely had its ups and downs to it. Uh, so, that'll do it for me this week. And, um, looks like the internet's back. Uh, so, you can check me out. At, check out my in-depth recap of SmackDown. Also, you know, TonyViz.blogspot.com. You can check out, subscribe to my YouTube channel. And you can feel free to leave me some feedback. Add me to contact, share videos with me. And yeah, thanks, to you, thanks to those of you who have. Um, and I'll be back on Monday with my uh, Raw recap, and hopefully the, the 
that won't be as painful as uh, this past week for So until Monday, when I'm back with my Raw recap, this is Tony Vistatone signing off. Have a great weekend, everybody.